Duramax Alpha H1 Hummer. that AM General ever put a Duramax. What's up guys, welcome back to another vlog. I've got an insane truck up for sale. It is a 2006 Gen 2 Duramax Alpha H1 Hummer. This was actually the only year that AM General ever put a Duramax engine into an H1 Hummer from the factory. Came out in 2006, the first one was a Gen 1. They had tan and black seats. Gen 2 came out with a couple little upgrades. This truck came into our Florida location I think about a year and a half ago, we did full Kevlar paint on it, D-ring brush guard. So the brush guard mounts into these recessed holes, has the Warren 12,000 pound winch integrated into it. So the D-ring brush guard has billet steel upper mounts. They're CNC'd out right here in house, actually right over there in the corner. They integrate in with the airlift hooks um, perfectly. Everything on here also has stainless steel hardware, so we replaced all the hardware with stainless steel where we possibly could. This truck has one of my favorite rims. It's a two-piece Hutchinson rim. I love these rims. Extremely expensive for the Alpha, which is kind of nice. The Kevlar paint job in a satin black finish, blacked out lights up here, full LED light package on it. We have a Wayland system, has flashing lights, strobes, does some really cool functions and features to it. Uh, very customizable. I don't even know if that's a word, customizable? No, it's not a word. Yeah, well today, today it's a word because it's freezing cold out here. We also have a FLIR system. This is forward looking infrared. What that does is it picks up heat signatures out on the road ahead of you. So it can shoot out quite a ways, typically about quarter mile or so in front of you to a half a mile, you're picking up a lot of detailed images of deer in the bushes. So anything that's just about to jump out on you, situational awareness from that FLIR system right here. And it's integrated into a pod that we built up as well. We've got our hood scoop over here, matching Kevlar black finish, synthetic winch line up here, which is a nice safety feature because if you haven't seen a winch line break or snap, a steel one, we'll throw it up and you can see a winch line snapping. That's a steel line. That is very dangerous because it stores up energy and when it snaps, it releases and it comes shooting back potentially 30, 50 feet with a tremendous amount of energy and can literally cut people in half. So be very careful with that. This is synthetic. If it does snap, it just goes completely limp and falls on the ground. It does not store any energy like steel does. But you also have an Alpine forward facing camera, an Alpine rear camera, light bar up there with the rigid LED light bar. I know it's kind of confusing. Before LED light bars were ever out or invented, we had a heavy duty light bar up here that allows you to mount virtually any amount of lights underneath, on top, kind of whatever configuration you want to do. And then you have a rigid LED light bar underneath it. Some people put them on top, some people put them on bottom. Personally, I prefer them underneath. Really cool feature about the offset snorkel. It gets the air intake up here, primarily for a bow wave. Even with something with maybe two feet of water, you come into that with the tires up on the front of the truck. What this does is it hits that water, rushes over the top. So you could have this bow wave of a couple inches up to a foot or so rushing over the truck, even in like two to three feet of water. That's where the snorkel comes into play. It really protects your air intake system that way. So having this offset here gives you visibility out. We also have a pre-cleaner up here built into it. And it kicks out a lot of dust and debris before it enters into the air filter. Customer also went with a lot of window tint all the way around. And he has window tint on the front windows. They're down right now, but they are here. The window tint on the bottom, about a bottom third or so. It's actually a pretty cool little feature because it cuts out a lot more glare. 
into the, the cab on the inside. Heated windshields, which are really nice for a couple reasons. One is this starts to get fogged up, gets rid of that fog very quickly. Secondarily, and I have had this on my old 93H1, I got snow packed down here and run into the wipers and I just can't get rid of it fast enough. With the heated windshields and it's melting the snow off, that made a huge difference in drivability and safety of the vehicle. So very, very clean setup. We continue that on with the roof rack. We have all the LED light bars on the roof rack with the wiring integrated into the structure itself. Very clean design. You just don't see wires all over the place. Not all roof racks have lights, so you're gonna have to drill a hole here, put the proper grommet in there, route the wires, a lot of man hours to do it correctly, but it shows. Rigid lights in the front and rear bays, which I like. This has the perfect amount of light output. You can run them in the center as well. This is our search and rescue 10 foot roof rack. It spans from the front of the truck all the way to the back, a very unique roof rack foot, fully box steel construction. We have a total of 36 square inches of foot that's actually resting on the roof. The traditional roof racks have gutter mounts and they actually mount on here and distribute the load on the rain gutter itself going down here. This rain gutter will bend if you put virtually any weight up there. You can put a couple hundred pounds up there, but if you start bouncing around, you're gonna get some deflection through there and it's gonna bend this rain gutter. Very common problem with lower quality roof racks and lower quality mounting systems. They are a double mount design. It's a full four inch wide J hook. So you don't have like a tiny little one inch J hook that's gonna pull up on it and bend the rain gutter up. It has a very wide load across four inches. So really nice design. We have our Predator logo engraved in here. And then we have two stainless steel bolts that come up here and then we have some rubber caps to go on there as well. The powder coated slats or the powder coated decking really just gives it a very consistent look. Now, moving on to the back of the truck. We've got a search and rescue rear winch bumper. We've got a Warren winch, 12,000 pound winch on the back here with again, a synthetic line, which is really nice. We also have dual ladder system on the back. And then we tie it in with a crossbar here that actually is a light bar with virtually infinite number of mounting positions for lights, either on the top or on the bottom. And then we tie it into the roof rack. We do that for a couple reasons. Um, primarily because you have a lot of flex here. If you're a bigger guy and you're up here pulling back on this thing, it's gonna flex a little bit. All the wiring on the roof rack run right across this little crossbar here into this structure here and then into the bumper completely hidden. You don't even see it. Rigid flush mounted lights built into the bumper corners. So you have your reverse lights over here, but you also have an override switch where you can flood out the entire back end of the truck with these rigid flush mount lights on either side. So inside the truck really focuses on gear and expanding what you can carry in the back of the truck. You'll see the structure up here. That is actually the center cargo divider as well as forward facing bench seat with full three point seat belts. So right on the back side here is a center cargo container. This lid opens up, this latch comes down and latches it closed. So you can throw a lot of gear in there, keeps it nice and secure. In addition to that, we have our search and rescue fender wheel racks up here and it wraps all the way up and around. You've got a forward piece, protects and separates it from going forward, as well as one in the back here as well, which protects these rear windows right over here. In addition to that, we have this perforated metal design all the way around, and that gives us a lot of mounting on the front of it, as well as on the inside. So you can see this bungee cord system on the front here. You could put virtually anything you want to across here. I know a lot of people put some of their quick access gear, extraction stuff, and just mount it inside here. We've got one on this side, one on that side, so we're inside the H1 Hummer. This is a 2006 Gen 2. This is the last model of the last model year H1 Hummer ever produced in 2006. Roy just wrapped all of these panels here. We went with entire black on the top, really clean look. Roy did an amazing job, just beautiful work. Everything is wrapped here. Customer upgraded to an Alpine head unit. That's something else I would also do. Uh, get a nice screen up here and that's tied into the front and rear cameras. He also has control of his switches for all of his lights 
right down here, a little panel, it's called aux beam. It's an aftermarket little pod, like an S pod. And you just tie in all your lights into that. Nice clean design out of that as well. In the back here, we have our guardian center console seat. There is the AM general bench seat, which just has lap belts. We came out with our upgraded bench seat. Our sits a lot lower than the AM general seat. It has full retractable three point seat belts, one on either side. So a lot more safety features built into the guardian than the other bench seat. So it has the same seat belts as you would have on the front driver and the rear passengers. In addition to that, we went with full custom leather on here, matching piping on here as well to the factory OEM Alpha seat. If you look at this truck, you're gonna see something that looks like it came out of the factory. Absolutely beautiful truck. The truck is up for sale now has 147,000 miles on it. We went through the entire truck mechanically. It runs absolutely amazing. We've done service work over in our Florida location on it for the last couple of years. So if you're looking for an H1 Alpha, second generation, it's got 147,000 miles on it, shoot us a call. Until next time, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below because Jason's gonna tell me this. I forgot to say that like he always does. So. Should have said that in the beginning too. Yeah, see, there, there you go. I should have said it in the beginning too. Well, good thing I have Jason to always tell me what I'm doing wrong. And I think um, I forgot to hit the record button. When did you forget to hit the record button? When I told you to start over. Are you serious? No. This is like the... <laughs> dude, I'm so... We have a job opening today. <laughs> for a new videographer. Or somebody just to... They did not even a videographer. All you got to do is hit start. Hit the start button. I don't even know, or play, what is it? Record button, hit the record button. If you can show me where the record button is on a Canon camera, you are hired. Come on out, we got a job for you. Until next time, see you guys soon. Uh, Jason probably won't be around much longer, but uh, yeah, morale will definitely pick up around here. See you guys soon, thanks. <laughs>